Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today I'm going to show you how to graph or plot a time series. This is aimed at students in Grade 10 in the Australian Curriculum as well as Year 11 in Tasmania, Western Australian Queensland in Year 12, depending on the math stream that you're doing. In this particular video, you're going to learn how to graph or plot that time series by hand using graph paper, a ruler and a pen. And we're also going to look at how to do that in an Excel spreadsheet. So firstly, I've got a worked example here. The table below shows the number of cars using a roundabout over 10 days. We're going to plot this on a time series graph. Now, I've already created the axes here. The first thing you're going to do when you get started is have a look at how many weeks that you have. You've got 10. And so you're going to want to make sure that you space out your axes at the bottom. And I'm going to actually give one square grid to each week. And then on the y-axis, we are going to plot the car. So it's very important to always remember that your time, even if it's given in a different order, time will always go on the x-axis. So the number of cars that are going to be seen is going to be plotted on the y-axis. And I've noticed that the numbers go from um, as low as the 30s all the way up to almost 100. Now I could do a break in the axis on the y-axis and start at 30 if I wanted to. However, I've got the space here and it's been provided to me. I've got enough space to give one square grid for every 10. So that's how I'm going to actually plot that. So it's always a good idea before you start graphing just to have about 30 seconds to think about how you're going to set it out. Uh, I notice a lot of students make a lot of mistakes, especially in external exams, because you have to use a pen. So it's really important that you have a bit of a think first and plan it out. Now, this is going to be in fast motion, so I will stop it from time to time just to make a few comments. So firstly, you'll notice that I'm plotting my titles and I know a lot of students do forget this in an exam situation. So it's really important that when you plot your titles that you actually make sure you use your units of measurement, which are weeks along the bottom, that you have a, a title that's meaningful for your actual graph on the top and that your y-axis also has a um, axis title. Now you'll notice here as well that I've numbered across the x-axis and numbered across the y-axis and that's important as well especially when you're going to be graphing in between. A lot of students do take shortcuts and maybe graph every second one and that does lead to some errors so it's important that we don't do that. Now I've not you've noticed that I'm actually plotting week number one. I've gone up and I'm doing this in pen because that's how you'll be doing it in your external exams as well. Pencils are not allowed. Now I'm going to make a deliberate mistake on this particular graph and you'll notice how I treat that mistake. You're not allowed to use liquid paper so that's really important that you do the right thing with mistakes. So let's have a look and see how we go with the graphing. There we are, I've made them a little mistake. You'll notice that I've crossed it out. Well, you can't notice now because I've paused it in the wrong spot. But now we're going to join those dots using a ruler. And one of the mistakes I do see students doing as well is they forget to bring a ruler and then they make really messy lines in between. Sometimes they'll go over the line two or three times and it's not clear which is the correct line. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you've done this, the best thing to do is to cross the whole graph out and start again on a fresh piece of paper. If you do that you need to make sure that you actually refer on the original paper to the place where you've put the revised graph whether that's in the back of a booklet on extra paper make sure you do label that clearly especially in external exams because as an external exam marker they won't know that you've put it on extra paper unless you identify that so let's continue and see the drawing of the lines to the different ones now notice I haven't started the graph all the way down to zero um, because there is no zero time and I haven't continued that graph down from the 10th week down to the bottom again because that would imply that all the number of cars is going to go back to zero in the 11th week. So I've just started it from the first week, finished it at the other week and it's very clear that I made a mistake and I've crossed at that point because I didn't draw any lines to or from that point. So that's important to note. Okay, now that we've done that by hand, we are now going to plot that in Excel. We're going to pick a different example here. The number of subscribers to a YouTube channel over a 12-month period, and we need to plot that using spreadsheet technology. They've got a range of subscribers all the way from 32 all the way up to 398, which is a bit less than my channel at the moment. So let's escape out of there, and we're going to actually copy and paste this table into Excel. Now, obviously, if you were given it as a hard copy question, you wouldn't be able to copy and paste. You'd have to actually physically type that. Um, 
but because we've got that in a digital version, we can copy and paste that straight in. It's actually fairly straightforward to graph that time series plot in Excel, which is one of the beauties of software. We simply highlight all of the data. We're going to click on our insert button at our top menu. Click on this drop down menu here for line graph. And I prefer this one here that's got the little dots to show where each of the data points is. Okay, now it's almost there. But there's a few things missing. Firstly, we're missing our access titles. We want to make sure we do this 100% correctly. So let's add access titles. Okay, notice that they're not very meaningful at the moment. So let's put under here the month of the year. So we don't know what month it is. Um, we don't know what year it is, actually. So we don't put that in there. If we knew what it, that it was 2013, we would add that, for example. And over here, we want something meaningful here. So we're going to add number of subscribers over here. Okay, and the word subscribers, it's not a great title. We want to make sure that has a little bit more meaning. So we're going to put in here number of subscribers to a YouTube channel. And if you knew what channel it was, you would put a bit more information there over a 12-month period. Now we can see that obviously that the uh, broadcaster did something a bit off in the month of August because he's rapidly or she's rapidly lost their subscribers after that date. I can think of a few YouTubers that that has happened to. And that's all we have time for. Isn't that exciting? So in our upcoming videos, these are the ones you're not going to want to miss. We're going to learn how to fit a least squared regression line to time series data, how to smooth time series data, how to calculate seasonal indices and de-seasonalize our data. And we're going to look at some complex questions from past exams. So this is a very exciting series, in my opinion. There's a lot coming. And I would like it if you could hit that notifications button so you'll know exactly when it's ready. And if you're not the kind of person that likes to do that, if you don't like to give out all your personal information, you can always follow us on Facebook. Just look up McClutchy Maths. Have a wonderful day and thanks for joining me.